Let's go ahead and get started. Hi, I'm Stacy from the Iowa City Public Library and welcome to this YouTube editing basics class. Um, we, before we started recording, we talked a little bit about who has tried YouTube before. For anybody who joined in right at the last few seconds, does anybody else wanna share whether they've tried um, YouTube in the past or if it's gonna be brand new to them? This is Chris, um, I just joined. Sorry about, I just showed up. I can't show you my face, but Stacy, by, by the way, you guys are the best uh, there at the Iowa City Public Library for doing these. Um, <clears throat> I have done a little bit of YouTube. So is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mute myself and just enjoy um, <clears throat> your presentation. And then uh, if uh, later I may ask some questions, okay? Certainly. And for um, for you or anybody else who said that they have dabbled in YouTube before, if there's something that I say that needs some elaboration or that you've got a special trick for, please jump in and share it. Because I am not a YouTube expert. I actually just started my little practice channel um, four days ago. <laughs> so mostly the point of this was um, I wanted to do a little series of like the main social media options out there. And so we've done Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, um, Instagram. And so this was just one of the big ones. And so, um, so I've dug into it pretty deep in the last few days, but I'm not an expert. So feel free to share. Let's just talk a little history to get our bearings. So YouTube has been around for 16 years you can believe it. And you'll know it as a video hosting website or the, just the place where anyone can share videos. And as you know, the content ranges from the professional level, thinking TV news clips, movie trailers, TED Talks, to the amateur level. If you think of all of the helpful videos that people make demonstrating a skill, from like makeup tutorials, to outdoor skills, to yoga, to playing the guitar, um, video blogging, where it's the person um, taking footage of their face talking to you. Um, there's the trend of unboxing videos where someone gets a new gadget and they show you everything that's in the box. Video game run-throughs, all of the animal footage of pets and wild animals, everything like that. So people are watching 1 billion hours of video on YouTube every day and new content is added at a rate of hundreds of hours every minute. So you wanna be part of that? <laughs> People are sharing their lives and their expertise on YouTube, ranging from silly to serious, functional to frivolous. And so maybe this is the time for you to join in. You probably know that you can watch videos on YouTube without any kind of account. But if you do log in with a Google account, you'll be able to like videos, subscribe to channels, and create your own YouTube channel. And for anyone who's brand new to this, channel is just your account and the collection of everything that you've shared on there. But you're, you can think of it as your own TV channel online. So the account is the first step. Um, if you have a Gmail account already, then you can just use that right off the bat. But if you don't, um, you'll wanna set up a Google account because YouTube is owned by Google. So that you'll see some um, connection there. Uh, let's see, and I'm gonna show you a little slideshow of what happens when you go to create your channel for the first time. So one moment. Okay, hopefully you can see this. So I just took some screenshots when I did this the other day because I wanted to make sure um, nothing would take you by surprise if you went to do this. So um, basically I went to youtube.com and I got logged in with my login. So my little I for Iowa City is at the upper right. Yours will be based on your first initial. And I went to create a channel. Oops. Um, and so it walks you through this whole process. So I got started and it gave me choices about my name. So you either can use whatever you set up for your Google account and let it stick pretty true to your real name, or you can create some other special name that says something about 
your plans for what you'll do with your channel or that sort of obscures your identity a little bit to protect yourself. Um, I did get some tips from the library's AV specialist. Um, her name is Bond and she's the one who handles the library's YouTube channel. And so she recommends, let me find my notes here, um, thinking carefully about your channel name and the way uh, people would search for it in Google. So things that are easily confusing for Google or strange spellings might be harder for people to find. So that's her tip. Once you decide to make something fresh, you'll have space to sort of um, create your new channel name if you don't use your personal name. And you'll create that. I went with my, um, my regular Google account because here it says you'll be making a brand new Google account if you do the separate name. And so here I am. You can take your time and upload a profile picture as well as write a description about your channel so people know what kind of content you're intending to share. And then as you scroll down, you can link it to other social media or websites that you have. This might sound very um, professional because some people are taking YouTube very seriously, right? So uh, for the person who works for a real estate company, if, if you were doing this for a professional YouTube channel, then of course you would want all of your business information on there and have it be very connected. If you wanted to become a YouTuber where you are making money off of your videos and creating sort of a brand around yourself, then you would also want to take this very seriously. But if you're just planning to share a handful of videos of your cat or something, then you wouldn't have to um, build this brand quite so intentionally. And so here I am, I've completed creating that channel. I can still customize it, but I can get started sharing videos now. Let me get out of that. Any questions about the account part or the initial setting up of your channel? Sounds like some of you may have already gotten that far. I see this is Susan and I have a question. Mm -hmm. It just occurred to me that in a job that I used to have, I think that I have that email account on there, but I forgot to change it before I left. So my guess is I would have to create a new channel because they'd require me to log into the old account and I wouldn't be able to do that. Do you think that's probably accurate? Yeah, so you're not hoping to, to continue using that old account or get any of those old videos? Well, it would be great if I could, but I'm not sure that I can. So I'm thinking I'm probably just have to let those live there. And um, perhaps I, I mean, I could take them off of my computer. I could find them and repost them under my new email. But my guess is I have to, um, I can't just switch them over automatically. But that's my guess. Is that your guess? Um, that sounds like a fine way to approach it, but I think that if you still knew the old email address and had the password, I don't know what would stop you from getting into it unless they had changed something. So you could poke around and see if you can still get logged in. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. That's I not did. Answer, but <laughs> no, that's actually a good idea because it's really not associated with the past employer, even though it's the past employer email address, it's not like it's particularly associated with that, if that makes sense. The password isn't. Okay. Yeah. Let me mention one other thing. This is slightly more advanced, yeah. but, but I did come I did across. Come across sorry. Maybe there's some feedback. Thanks. Thanks, Susan. Um, I did come across something where um, if you get into a YouTube account that's had some past activity that I believe there is a way that you can download all of your content. This is sort of like if you were with me for Facebook recently, I don't know who if anybody was, Facebook has an option where you can download all of your past activity. And so all of your pictures and your whatever's your posts 
um, can be saved to your own computer. So Susan, if you were able to get in and you wanted to get all of that content out, sounds like there might be a sort of decent way to do that in one stroke. So you can look into that as well. Um, okay, were there any other questions about signing up or getting started? I'm looking at your names, like your, your names are gonna somehow tell me that you're about to speak. Okay, um, well, I'll just mention that in the course of those screens, there were some little links in the fine print bringing up some of YouTube's rules and legal topics. So just a couple that I'll talk about. Um, it, first of all is copyright. So um, I'm gonna quote from YouTube. They say, creators should only upload videos that they have made or that they're authorized to use. That means they should not upload videos they didn't make or use content in their videos that someone else owns the copyright to, such as music tracks, snippets of copyrighted programs or videos made by other users unless you get the necessary authorizations. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about music copyright later, but basically um, ideally you'll be putting up content that you made fresh yourself um, and no one else has a right to. In other words, if I um, put, uh, put up a uh, rendition of uh, uh, Beata Vishera, which was published, uh, which was written down in uh, 1220, uh, that would be okay. Yeah, that is probably in, <laughs> in public domain by now, yes. <laughs> um, but if you, so if you were to try to use uh, a song, like I got in trouble when I tried to put something on YouTube once years ago, I did like a um, a wedding montage photo of my brother and his wife, and I put a Stevie Wonder song on there, and I got an email saying, not permitted. I did not get permission for that Stevie Wonder song, and so I had to take my video down. Um, but if I had sung a cappella the Stevie Wonder song, which would have been <laughs> a real travesty to share on the internet, um, the odds are good that that would not have triggered any alarms. So copyright is a big topic. Um, I'm happy to answer your questions about that later or separately if you want to get into that in detail. The other thing that they provide a link to that you might just want to scroll through are their community guidelines. Um, just to steer clear of anything that could be problematic. One new policy that they have is about COVID-19 misinformation. So they're continually updating and changing that so that it's reflective of what's going on. Before we get into how to post a video, let's just talk briefly about making videos. So um, to create your video footage, it's okay to use your smartphone or if you have a digital camera, you don't need anything fancy. Some tips are turning your phone sideways or landscape instead of up and down is better for how YouTube displays it. But you might wanna think in advance about where you're sharing it because for TikTok and for Instagram stories, um, upright videos are the preferred format. So make a plan for where you'll be sharing it. And then I asked for some tips from our AV specialist. She recommends um, holding the camera steady as a main way to have a good video. And she says there's a trick where you pull your elbows into your body to make a sort of tripod with your hands so that your arms just aren't out shaky. And to think about lighting, natural light is always the easiest and cheapest option, she says. And then audio. She says, if you have the budget and you wanna upgrade your video in some way, a separate microphone from the smartphone is a good first investment. And she says, Amazon has tons of options. And she lists a couple of brands, Rode and Tascam, that are good for this kind of equipment, but they might not be entirely cheap, but the quality would be high. So that's just if you're trying to take it up to the next level. If you just wanna play around a little bit, the, um, the built-in microphone in your Phone is probably fine. What about the possibility of uh, uh, recording uh, and a actually overdubbing things uh, uh, and working stuff up in, for example, Audacity or, or some other uh, uh, audio editing program and then merging that somehow with uh, video? 
Yeah, that's a great question. So um, the what I'm going to cover with YouTube, um, YouTube does not, at least I couldn't find a good way for a person to work with the video and the audio separately or to upload your own audio. It really is giving you just a handful of, of quick editing tools that should help people who are just trying to do the basics. Jerry, it sounds like you are more advanced. Certainly treating your audio separately and merging it back together is a great way to do it, but that would require separate software, maybe um, like Adobe Premiere Pro in order to get your things put back together. And the library does have that kind of software in our digital media lab, but unfortunately it's not available right now due to our current COVID phase level. So when we do open up more, if you're interested in getting into the more professional methods of audio and visual editing, please let us know and we'll explain where you can do that. Um, one last consideration is resolution. So this is how high quality or low quality your video is. For the most part, you don't really need to worry about this. You could just try posting something and if you don't like the quality, you could look into it. But I did find that the ideal resolution for YouTube is 1080p or pixels. And looking on my computer, I have a Mac laptop and when I went to export videos from the photos mm -hmm. app or whatever it's called, um, it gave me the choice of a few different qualities, 480, 720, 1080, or 4K, which would be like high definition, I think. So you probably don't have to think about that, but if you do, um, there's tons of information out there that can help you. Okay, <laughs> now when it comes time to post a video, you'll have to decide, are you going to post it directly from your smartphone or transfer it through your computer, like I sort of said. I'm gonna show you the mobile version for YouTube first since the tools are a little different and not quite as advanced as the desktop version. So my family is sending text messages right now. So let's hope that they can just cool it for a minute while I do this demonstration. I'm gonna share my screen. This might just take a second. Okay, here we go. Okay, sorry that took so long. Can you, can you see my YouTube screen now? So this is my little fake account that I made. Um, so it's giving me just random videos that <laughs> things I might like. But my main thing to add something is this plus sign or maybe up here under the eye, um, I could go to my channel and do some things there. But let's just do from this plus sign. I'm going to upload a video or go live. So this is a decision you'll have to make. Um, I would say for the most part, you'll want to upload videos because then you can do different takes and you can watch it back and make sure you like it. But if you think about people at protests in the past few years or other things where um, sort of news is being made in the moment, going live makes a lot of sense. Or if, um, if you wanted that to be sort of a feature that you were um, um, vlogging and people could interact with you while you were still live, you might want to do it that way. But I'm going to upload a video. And I already navigated to um, this little worm video that I think is cute. So I'm gonna choose that. So this doesn't matter to you, but this was right after the derecho happened. This is all of the debris in my backyard. And I had a little pause from the work and I noticed this little worm crawling along my deck. And so um, it was a nice moment for me amidst the chaos. So I really have two options here to start with. So I can trim, I can um, bring the beginning or the end in. So if, um, if I wanted to wait until he had started crawling a little bit, 
or if I wanted to shorten up the ending so that it stops earlier, I can just grab a hold of these edges of the blue and drag them back and forth. And it'll preview as I move it, if you watch the video, um, to show where it will stop. My other option down here looks like a magic wand. If I tap that one, this is gonna give me some filters. Um, I did not find that filters were an option in the desktop version. So if this matters to you, you might wanna to plan to do it from the YouTube app right on your phone. So if I just tap on, on these different filter names, you can look and see that it does sort of change the way the colors or the contrast look a little bit. Make it black and white, et cetera. That doesn't really do anything for my <laughs> video, but dance party. Right, so you can have some fun with that if you want. So I kind of like the way this looks, so I'm going to go next. And it's gonna do that work of shortening up or trimming my video that I asked for and putting the filter on top of it. And in the meantime, I can create a title. So I can call this, this is just like a worm. I don't know what kind of insect that was. I can add a description and then I can choose my privacy setting. So I'm gonna let this be public someone wants to look at my worm, they are welcome to. Um, location is an option. I would say if you are concerned about privacy, there's no need to use this feature at all. But if you were on vacation or something and you wanted to make it clear that you were at an interesting place, or if you want people to be able to find Iowa videos um, or you know, like a restaurant name or a place name, you're welcome to try that. And then for playlists, within your channel, you can group different videos together, but you don't have to. So that's just a feature that you could play with if you wanted to. So here's my worm video. I'm going to say next. And it's going to ask me about kids. So I read a little bit about this. Basically, if you were to check this, yes, it's made for kids. Um, it really has to be that you intended children to be your primary audience. And if you weren't intending them as the main audience, then tapping no, it's not made for kids is always a good option. No, that seems a little bit weird because if it's fine for all ages, um, you might feel like saying, yeah, it's okay for kids, but it's really about the intention. So I'm gonna leave my setting there and then upload up at the right here. And it's uploading my video. Depending on your video size and your internet speed, um, the time it takes to upload can really vary. Um, but it seems like maybe, maybe that's done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap on my little I, my um, initial up here and I can come to my channel. And there's no preview yet for the worm, so it might be that it's still processing it. Or if I just tap on the, yep, so it's still working on it. We'll come back to that later. So that's, um, that's the mobile version. Only a couple of ways to edit there trimming the beginning or end and adding a filter. Are there any questions about that part? And I'll, I'll show you all of those same steps plus a few more in the desktop version next. Okay, and then let me share my browser window. That's the wrong one here. Here we go. Okay, so here you should be seeing my um, my browser window. I'm at youtube.com and my little icon over here means that I'm signed in and I'm seeing other people's videos 
because I'm also, mm -hmm. you know, could be enjoying watching as well as creating videos, right? So if I wanna see my channel, I'll click on my icon, come to your channel. And these are some of the videos I've added, but if I wanna see all of them, I'll go to this videos tab. And I can um, manage my videos if that's my main goal, which it is. So here you can see that the, the worm video is still being processed, even though that's a pretty short video, but applying the filter might have increased my time. And then I've got some other videos that I've added in the last few days. I'm gonna show you um, a few different tricks on these different videos, and I didn't want to have to wait while they all uploaded, so I preloaded some. And you'll see that some of these are private, the ones that we're gonna work on, and I made a couple public just to see if they got any views, but these are pretty much my own views <laughs> that I made of a couple of travel videos that I've done. So here within my channel, um, if I come back even to view my channel, there's a couple different places where I can start creating a video. Um, let's load and the main one, let me come back after all. The main one is this create up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and create. I have that same choice, whether I'm live or uploading a video. I'm gonna upload again and select my files. So I want this library too. I convinced a couple of coworkers to let me videotape them for this. So um, this is sort of a silly video, but uh, it'll serve us well for a couple examples. So um, giving it a title, you'll see that you've got a hundred characters to work with. I found recommendations of making this as explicit as possible. So. This is sort of a silly video where I'm just gonna be like library time. But if you were doing a video of like how to catch walleye on a certain lake or <laughs> how to beat this level in a video game or whatever it is, or these are the, the slides from this family from this year to that year, um, being explicit in that title is great. And then the description also is space for you to really get into some detail. You've got 5,000 characters and explain what people are seeing, give them extra links and context for your video. So this is basically Shauna picks out books at the library, exclamation mark. You'll see like nothing has happened over here yet. It's still loading my video. So while it works on that, we can take our time and fill in these other options. So one thing is the thumbnail. And as it says, a good thumbnail stands out and draws people's attention in the search results. So if someone searched for library, um, this is what they would see in those search results. So I can either choose um, some snapshots from the video that they provided, or I can upload my own. And I took the time to make one for this. So I'm gonna upload that. Bond, our AV specialist, makes her thumbnails in Photoshop. You don't need to have Photoshop necessarily though. I made this in Canva, which is a free graphic design website. You could make something with whatever, whatever software you have or um, edit a picture on your phone and use that picture any way that you want to play around with it. The first time though that you upload your own thumbnail, it did make me verify that I'm a real person by asking for my phone number and sending me a code. So I think I did all of my other video uploads without having to do that verification. So just so you know, that's an extra little hurdle for security that they provide. Um, and I mentioned before that the time it takes to upload depends on the size and internet. 
but I have some specifics. So short videos, less than a minute, take a minute or two to upload, but longer videos over five minutes could take up to 15 minutes to load. So um, beware that you might need to step away and do something else for a little while and that it might also ask for verification for those longer videos to make sure you're not somehow a robot putting videos on the internet. Okay, so working down through these options, I've got my thumbnail. I have the option to put this on a playlist, but I'm gonna skip that. Here's this question again about the audience. So no, this is not made specifically for kids. It's not putting it in any kind of a category saying that it's only for adults. It's just um, complying with this, this law. And you can click on these links and learn more about that if you're interested. I'm going to click on these more options. So paid promotion, for the most part, we're not going to worry about this. But if you might be doing something where you're paid for it, you might want to read about it. And then next are tags. So these are like keywords that are attached to your video that will help people searching. So I watched a YouTube of like a, a YouTuber recommending how to make your videos noticeable. And they recommend typing in all 500 characters, like filling as much as possible and using the language that you think people will search for. So for their video, they wrote like how to be a YouTuber, how to be interesting on YouTube and all of these different phrases. For this one, this is just silly. So this is gonna be library, comma, libraries picking out books, right? I don't know what someone would search for in a library, <laughs> something like that. Um, and then if somebody searches for that phrase, the odds are better that they'll see my video. Next, we've got some things about language and subtitles. So um, I set my channel to default to English, but you might have a different language you want on there caption certification is sort of more about official TV shows, but you can look into that. And then I'll show you some more about subtitles later, but we'll skip that for right now it's because there's no, uh, nobody talks in this video. So here, you remember on the phone, it asked me about location, but this gets a little more in depth. I'm going to skip that. And then we can talk about licenses. So I retain my copyright for this video, even though I'm sharing it on YouTube. Um, and the standard license is that nobody else should try to use my video, right? That I'm retaining my rights. But if I made something that I wanted to share, you can make it this Creative Commons um, license type where you're happy if someone else takes your video and makes changes to it and remixes it into something new. Um, embedding is where you let somebody else put it on a website. There's no need for that, but it's also, I can't imagine why anyone would do that. And a couple other features here. So category um, is not that important, but you might find that if you really fit one of these categories that you might want to choose it. Because what probably happens is that for the algorithm for people's viewing, it decides that I'm very into autos and vehicles and pets and animals. And so when a new video comes up that fits that category, it might be more likely to show me one of those videos, but um, it's fine to just sort of leave it at the default as well. Finally, there's a part about comments. I would just leave this at the default and I'll show you later where you can find your comments. And the showing how many people like and dislike, this is the thumbs up and the thumbs down that you see on YouTube videos. If you didn't want that to be part of your video experience, you could unclick that. But by now you can see it's finished processing my standard definition video. And I can go next. Uh, so video elements, I'm not gonna go very deep into either of these. So 
the end screen and the cards. I'm going to show you an example. Hopefully you can see this other tab. This was just um, a video that I came across. I'm almost at the end of it, but I just want to show you what I mean by the cards at the end of the video. So I'm going to play. So these little boxes that pop up where it's linking to other videos that this same creator has made that they think I might also like are the cards that they're talking about. This is to one particular video and this one you'll notice with this little um, these three lines that this is a whole playlist of 17 videos that they're recommending. So if you really wanted to make connections between your videos or say that was the first one, the next one in the series is coming, you might like to um, take advantage of this, but you don't have to, you can skip past it. And now here I get to decide again about my visibility. Let me go a little more into detail on those. So if I set it to public, anyone on the internet can search for and find this video. If I set it to unlisted, um, it won't appear in internet searches or in YouTube searches. Only people who are given the link by me will be able to access this video. So, um, so if you are in a situation where you're, you wanna share your video with a friend or family member, but it's too big to be emailed, and you, maybe you've used up all of your Google Drive space, or you don't have any other way to share a big file, um, making it unlisted or private um, could be a good way to share directly with someone that you want to see it. The difference between this is unlisted. If someone, if you shared the link and they shared it with somebody else, that third person would be able to see your video. Whereas if you pick private, it's only you and the people whose Google accounts you type in here. So you could type in people's Gmail addresses and then they would have to log in to see it. And you can have it send them an email to let them know that it's available. Any questions about the privacy part? I feel like most people on YouTube are intending for it to be public, but there is sort of this shadow part where you can use it basically for file sharing if, if you're interested. Stacy? Yeah. Uh, this is Joan. I had a question about that because one time I was trying to share a video with somebody and I, I think I had it private. I can't remember if I had it private or unlisted, but they had a lot of trouble getting into it, even though I put their email in. I'm just wondering on the private, is it only people with a Gmail that can even share that with? So the way it says is enter their email address and they must sign into their Google account. So it must be. So it sounds like conceivably you could put a Yahoo email address in here, but I don't know if that would work, if it would be able to connect that a person would sign in with their Google account. Kind of seems like if, if you know they have a Gmail account that this would be a good way to do it. Okay. But I can understand how if they had any other type of email address that this might be a hassle. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Any other questions about this part? So I'm gonna make this one private. This is gonna be my workflow. Um, so I know that I wanna spend some time using Google's, no, sorry, YouTube's editor on this. And so rather than make it public in its raw form, I wanna make it private for now. I'll do my edits and then I can set it to public later. Um, you also could set a date to debut your video too, if that made more sense for you. And it's asking just a couple of like legal or rule checks here, just to remind that, you know, you should be making sure you comply with their rules. So I'm going to save it now. And here it shows up at the top. I did a draft of something similar earlier. So that's why you sort of see two because I was afraid it might not upload or something, but <laughs> this is the one that I want to play with. So 
I'm in my channel content. I can see all my uploads. If I want to make changes to this one, I can, I can look at some of these options here, but basically I'm gonna click on the image, the thumbnail, and then this is a repeat of that information that we put in to start with, but you can make changes here. But the powerful thing is on the left, this little, um, what's it called, a clapboard or whatever, is the editor. And so if I click there, it brings me into their video editor. So the main things I'm looking at here, I've got my little preview of my video, and then I've got a few options down here. Um, the first one is about trimming the content. So adjusting the start and end point, cutting things out of the middle, stuff like that. The next one down is for the audio, where we can add some music on top, things like that. We've got blurring, and then we've got the end screen where you're making recommendations. So just working through these. Um, I can play my video so that you see what I'm starting with. Here we go. Ready, action. So here's Shauna who very gamely agreed to be videotaped. So um, if I grab a hold of this gray circle, I can adjust the point I'm seeing. So this thumbs up is kind of a fine point to start. So if I want to trim, I'll click on trim and you'll see that it brings up these blue lines. Those are kind of means that I have some control. So if I grab and drag it to that point, now, if I play my video, that's my new start point. And I'll just let you see what comes up next. So here's Mary, who has also <laughs> politely agreed to make a cameo. Um, and we'll let Shauna finish with her books. Thumbs up, that would be a good stopping point, right? So I can come over here and I can grab a hold of the end and drag it here. Um, you'll see that um, my save button is still gray. It's not gonna let me save it. What I need to do is preview that change and then the save becomes um, a possibility. Another thing I wanna show you how to do is a face blur. So at the point where Mary shows up, if, if that was a stranger that didn't consent to be in my video, it would be nice of me to hide her face. So I'm gonna see if we can do that. But I'm deliberately doing this wrong to show you the video can't be blurred because it's currently being trimmed. So I don't know why, but YouTube will not let you do trimming and blurring in the same save. So what I'll have to do is save it so that it takes care of the, um, the trimming and then I can come back and do my other changes. This is a little scary, right? A few hours. I don't think it's gonna take that long, <laughs> but we'll see what happens. You see how it tells me it's being processed, come back later. So what I'll usually do is go back to my channel and I can see that it's processing and we'll give it a minute to do that. Hopefully it'll be sort of fast. You can also, um, with your trimming, I did the beginning and the end. You can also cut out a point in the middle. Um, and I can show you that if you, if you want, or just know that you could look up those instructions um, or goof around with it too. This is still processing. Let's see. Um, maybe I'll show you the middle slicing in a different video here. So I already did it once in this video of this boat tour, but let's do it again. So if I, um, if I pick to trim, and then bring it to a point where I want to stop my little video. Like if this is, if I don't want to see the, the edge of the boat, I can stop here. 
And so I'll click the word split down here at the bottom. That marks the beginning point. Then if I drag the cursor to the point where I want it to start again, dragging it way over here so that I don't see that the edge of the boat at all, then I can click split again. And dragging this to point to this point um, will remove that part. And you'll see there's a little X that shows up. If I change my mind, I can undo it there. So with this part highlighted, I'm going to preview. And I can um, bring my start point anywhere I like and play. And you see how it jumped right over that part. So if I'm happy with that, I can save it. And again, that'll take some time on its own. I just wanted to show you that because I feel like that's not totally intuitive, all those times that you click split. So um, if you try that, you might have to goof around with it a time or two to get it to work. Okay, so here we are. Um, it's not saying processing anymore here. So I can click on my thumbnail again and click on my editor option at the left again and make my next changes. Um, let's try the blur. I'm not sure if it matters dragging my cursor to the right time or not, but I'm going to go ahead and do that. And if I click on this plus sign, I can do a face blur or a custom blur. So face obviously is defaulting to a person. Custom is a rectangle or an oval. So let's say you had a video where, um, somebody else's vehicle was in there and you wanted to blur out their license plate just out of politeness, you might want to do a custom blur for that. There, um, there is a feature here where it's going to try to detect a face for me. I found that with the masks on, this did not work. We can give it a shot and see if it does. Um, but my guess is that this is going to come up with no faces. Yep. So instead, we'll do the custom blur. And it's picking out um, the time period that the blur applies to. So it's defaulting to my entire video. Well, I don't need it for the whole time. You'll see this little blur that shows up to start with. I'm going to grab this and bring it to the point where Mary comes into the shot. And I can test that by dragging my little cursor back and forth. Here's where she's gone. So I can grab the endpoint and bring it back. So I'm really just going to be dealing with this chunk of time. And you'll see up here that I've got some choices. So those are my minutes and seconds it's going to apply to. I can make it a rectangle or an oval. And I can grab a hold of this and I can drag it around to apply to the point where her face is. And then I can choose for it to try to track her, to follow her movement, or stay in one spot. The tracking sometimes works well, sometimes doesn't. So let's see, I'm going to bring it back a few seconds. Let's see what it does. Yeah, that did not track her at all, did it? <laughs> so let's come back to this point. I'm going to drag the circle where it should be. And now when I hit play, let's see what happens. So that was better. I can keep playing with this, bringing it to the point where it needs to change bring it to the next point. You can sort of train it about where you want it to be. Can't imagine you'll use this feature a lot, but it's sort of fun. So if you decide <laughs> that that's useful for you, um, you can play around with that option. What's more likely is that you'll want to put some audio over your video. So let's add a track here in this music, um, music note field. So as I said before, most popular music is going to be off limits for your use in YouTube. 
Um, as an alternative, YouTube provides a pretty robust library of copyright friendly, royalty free music. It's not necessarily going to be award winning music, but it's going to be something to fill in your video and give it a, a sense of um, atmosphere, right? So right by clicking this plus, it brought me to this free music um, window here. And so I listened through to some of these and I like one that's called Fast and Run. So I can search for that since I know that name or you can scroll through and find it. Here I can play a little preview. Let me reduce the volume so this doesn't blow your ears off. Maybe that makes no difference. So I feel like that's fine. Let's add that to my video. As I'm looking here, so it's the blue line is filling my whole video, which is what I'd like. And there's this mix level. So I don't know if you remember, you could hear me saying action at the beginning and maybe laughing at another point. If I have this way up to the top, the fast and run music is going to totally cover up my audio. But if I bring it down, it's going to be um, both sort of mixed where this volume is more or less loud. I'm going to show you an example on a different video of what that actually sounds like, but I just wanted to show you where it is here. So I've got my video trimmed. I've got my music. I've got my blur. If I want to hear how this sounds and what it looks like from the top, I can bring my cursor back to the beginning and hit play. If I don't want to make you wait, I can jump ahead to the part where Mary is. Oh, that wasn't that great, sorry. <laughs> Okay, so that's my video. I'm going to skip this part about the end screen since I sort of mentioned that before and it doesn't matter to me. And so if I'm happy with my video, I'm going to save it. And again, it might take a while. Um, just be ready for that. While it processes, I'm going to do this back arrow back to my channel. And I'm going to show you the sound mixing on this waterfall video. Um, the waterfall sound on this is very loud and not very soothing. And so if I put some music on top of it, that should make it more tolerable. I'm going to play it as it is for a second, just so you hear how loud this is. Right, so that's that was fine in person, but that's kind of awful in a video. So if I add some music on top. Um, Let's see, another one that I liked was called Sweet Relief. Let's find that one. That's what it sounds like. That's a bad example because that sounds too similar <laughs> to the waterfall sound. How about one that's called Blue Dream? Right, okay. So that sounds nice. I'm going to add that. And you'll see it shows up here. When I mix it, if I were to play it right now, it has a little bit of a fuzzy sound in the background. But if I bring this down, you can hear that waterfall through it. And so I can keep changing it until I reach a balance I like. So having that music just sort of softens the audio that came with it, I think. Um, let's see. Just a little bit more on the topic of music. So YouTube has this built-in selections here. Um, the starred, you can favorite some that you like and then they'll show up later and a little more conveniently. But you can also look online for other websites to find royalty-free music. 
It's usually created by people specifically for that purpose who are just people who are creative and want to share. And another option is what about making your own music if you're musical? Noodling something simple on the piano <laughs> that's, you know, wasn't composed by anyone but you. And then um, adding that to your video could be a fun thing to do. But I will say that I don't see a way to add my own audio track here within the YouTube editor. So for that and for some other things, you might find yourselves wanting to do more editing that's beyond what YouTube is providing here. And in my research, I found that YouTube used to have more features that were removed maybe last year. So they used to have a way to add a title screen, um, transitions, stabilization if your video was kind of jumpy and removing your audio track. So those are just are not options now. If, if you tried this before and you're having a hard time finding them. Um, but I will say that if you have a Windows computer, the Microsoft Photo app that comes with it does have some video editing features that you could explore. And then again, when the library reopens, Adobe Premiere Pro is the professional software that we have for video editing where you can add audio tracks and make lots of changes and transitions in a way that make it look, make it look really professional. So I'm gonna go ahead and save my waterfall video. And in the meantime, hopefully our other videos will be complete. So let me come back. And library time is ready. So if I click on the thumbnail, you'll see that it gives me the link to the actual video. And so let's go there. So here's what it would look like to anybody out on the internet. Although you'll see it is still private. Oh, it didn't do the blur. Okay, well, I don't know why it didn't do the blur. Maybe it was still processing that part or maybe I didn't save it right. Anyway, <laughs> you'll wanna check that before you make it live if that matters to you. Um, but I just wanted to show you that in your list of videos, um, this is where you can change the visibility. So if I felt like this one was ready for the world, I can set it to public now and publish it. And I was going to show you, oh, I was going to show you on my Stacy one, um, the face blurring. So let me edit this one really quick. Since I don't have a mask on, you can actually see my face. If I do the blur and a face blur, when it detects faces, it will find mine. It just takes a minute or so. Or longer than a minute. There we go. <laughs> so it picked out my face. If this was a video with multiple people, they would each show up here. So you could leave some people visible and choose someone in particular to fuzz out. So I'm going to blur my face. And so now when I play it. Hi, I'm Stacy. I work at the Iowa City Public Library. So you see that the blur kind of bounced around. It's trying to track where my face is, which is, you know, very nice of it. The, another feature I just want to show quickly is subtitles. So this is a separate button on the left here. I might have to save this before I do the subtitles. Um, I goofed around with this a little bit and I'm not an expert. So um, I'm just gonna show you the way I approached it. So I'm gonna add some subtitles. There are all these options. I think auto sync is the best one because it lets me do the typing and it tries to anticipate when to put the words. But there's some other options here if you were trying to do something very professional. So basically 
it expects me to listen to the video and type what I hear. So I'll do that. Okay, so that's my thing. And then it lets me assign the timings. So it's, it can tell that my, um, my sound waves picked up around this point, um, but I can refine that. So if my starting point is about here, a minute 29, and for me to say, hi, I'm Stacy lasts I'm until 319, I can set this to 319. And I can cut that part out, add another section, and see how this works. Hi, I'm Stacy. I work at the Iowa City Public Library. So that didn't last as long as it needed to. Let me bring it to a later point. I'll just show you this one last time. So you can see on the preview up at the right what it Hi. does. Maybe I clicked something wrong. Maybe it is overwhelmed by what I was doing. Hi, I'm Stacy, and I work at the Iowa City Public Library. Okay, so that's an example of how to do the um, captions or subtitles on yours. And it will also translate into another language once you have set it up in a first language. I have not explored that but that would be fun for you to try on your own. So I did my music example with the waterfall. I did my subtitle example with Stacy, and we've got library time is now public. If you wanted to share this with a friend, um, a good way to do it would be to click on your video. You can copy and paste this link into a text message or an email, or if you go to the actual video, um, you can use the sharing button like you might with other people's videos to embed it directly into your Facebook page or something else. Because just because you share it online doesn't mean that everyone's going to notice it. You might have to do a little bit of legwork to make sure it's visible. I'm sorry that we're going past eight o'clock. I've got just a couple more things to share, but of course, if you need to go, feel free to leave. I just wanted to talk about comments and statistics. So um, if I come back to my studio here, um, the default place you might start is at the dashboard. So this is like the overall um, view of my channel and what's happening. So my latest video has one view, that was me. And like, if I was worried about subscribers, this might be very important to me to know how many people were interested in my channel. My top videos are the a video of Lansing and my it's library time video, right? If you want to look into your analytics, that'll give you your statistics. So I can see how many views, what my reach was and my audience, things like that. In a particular video, I can also see that if I come back to my content and I wanna see I had one view, no comments, nobody clicked to like or dislike, but if people had been interacting with it that way, I could see at a snapshot what people were thinking of my videos. And then um, if there were comments, this would be a fast way to find out about them. But by default, YouTube will send you an email anytime someone comments on your video or subscribes. And they also try to filter most spam comments. But if you need to, you can go in and moderate the comments manually. So let's see, one last point, I'm going to stop sharing, is about ads. So if you watch YouTube videos, I'm sure you're familiar with an ad at the beginning or an ad tucked into a midway point. Will that happen to your videos is the question. So if you, um, I, 
I should have stopped sharing or kept sharing. There's a button that has like a dollar sign and it's called monetizing or monetization. So if you choose to monetize your videos, then they probably will have ads added to them. But if you don't, for the most part, um, no ads should show up. But I did find that maybe recently YouTube made a little change. And this is the phrase I found. Um, YouTube may place ads on videos in channels that aren't part of the program where, um, where you're making money off of it. And if your video contains content to which you don't own all the rights, then the rights holder might decide to place ads on it. That's pretty complicated. I would say for the most part, you won't have any ads unless you try to go down the, the monetization route. But if anything like that happens, there's lots of resources out there and you can look things up. Okay, I didn't think it was gonna take that long <laughs> to go through this. So I wanted to leave time for questions um, and I'm happy to stay. So what questions do you have? And let me look in the chat to see if, okay. So um, someone asked if it's a private video just for my family, could I add a popular copyrighted song? I think the way it works is that, um, I'm not gonna know the right vocabulary for this. Basically um, an, an algorithm or, or something is going to pick up on those patterns of copyrighted songs and it's going to automatically recognize that you used something that's copyrighted. Um, and I don't know if it's up to the, um, the particular like company that owns it to either take the action or not, or if it's automated. But my guess is that even if you have it set to private or unlisted, your video will probably still be subjected to that automated, um, I'm not talking well, <laughs> the automated system where it's looking for the copyright violations and it's probably gonna send you an email. But you know what? Um, if you do put a popular song on there, it's not like you're going to be sued. You're just going to be told to take it down. So if you wanted to do an experiment <laughs> for a song that was worth it to you on your private video and see what happens, um, that seems reasonable. Or I can also look up if a private video is subject to copyright for music. I can look that up and see see what, what it says. What other questions do you have? And thank you for the person who sent me the direct message liking my worm video. I just think it's super cute. So thank you for saying that. <laughs> uh, chat. Oh, Lightworks is a free alternative to Adobe Premiere Pro. Is that Adobe or something else? made by someone else? Yeah, I don't know who else made it, but um, I downloaded it and started messing around with it because obviously also don't have access to the DML, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's an option. If you have uh, an Apple computer, iMovie is an option. Um, the Windows Photos can do some basic things. So there are some options out there for the more advanced video editing. Any other questions or comments from the people who, who've done this before? Thanks, Stacy. Just wanna say thank you. you, you that was a nice uh, presentation. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah. So, I just wanted to say like, this is a starting point just some very basic editing that YouTube has built in. Um, but you can certainly create interesting videos just using those few little features and not needing any other software. And then Without getting too intimidated, right? <laughs> right, so how intimidating did that sound? Like you could skip the whole face blurring, you could skip the music part entirely and just do the trimming and that could be all you need. Yep, exactly, if you just need to do something simple instead of getting into Adobe Premiere, which is a big learning curve. 
Yeah, it is a big difference between those two, yeah. So just for YouTube, um, the library does have books on YouTube. You can also find lots and lots of resources online and also videos in you, YouTube itself about YouTube with people sharing how they make their videos. So if you need extra input or you have a specific question, I guarantee that you'll be able to find guidance out there. Great. All right. Well, um, I'll send a follow-up email um, with a survey and um, please feel free to ask me any questions that come up either now or later about YouTube and I'll make sure I can get you some answers.